Alright, ready to worship the Lord today? Amen. Amen. We're going to get, try to, like I said, we're gradually trying to do things uh, like we did in the past. And uh, I used to open us up with service in the past, so I'm back up here. Y'all can see my uh, beautiful face every week again. So, like I said, we're trying to slowly, but surely uh, get back things back to uh, the way they were as best we can. Uh, so this morning I'm going to uh, ask uh, Brother Danny to open us up in prayer, and then we'll get going.
Brenton, I take every moment out of the way, Lord, to have your way in me, Lord. You gave your life for us, and Father, we know that when we accepted your son, Jesus, we gave our life back to him. He gave us his righteousness, we gave him our sin. We give him all of our sorrows, and he gives us unlimited joy. God, you blessed us so much. Lord, I pray this, in this service, in this moment, this time of worship, God, that you would have your way in us. Have your way with us, Lord, as we leave this place. Have your way every moment we're awake, every moment, every breath that we take. God, have your way in us. Father, we know that your way is the best way. It's the only way that we're going to ever be satisfied in our life is if we give ourselves completely to you, Father, we do that this morning. Father, in our worship, in the singing part of worship, and now as we move over to receive the word of God, receive the message you have for us, God, have your way in us. Lift us up and encourage us today. Send us out of this place, Lord. Empower, strengthen this servant, God. Father, we've got a message the world needs to hear. Father, empower us. Make us bold enough to give that message. Father, I pray that you use us in a way that pleases and glorifies you. We pray it in Christ's name.
How can you be homesick for a place you've never been? I don't know. You get homesick for heaven sometimes. So, well, praise God that he's got a place waiting for us that's worth longing for. That's worth waiting for. It's worth striving to bring others into the kingdom so they can enjoy it as well. And we, we have so much to do on this earth and such a calling on our lives. God has been good to us. Yet he requires much. I think the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. I don't know what else God should give you, should give us, that would feel indebted to him. And uh, I just praise God that he is always faithful and that he's always there for me. I know this is going to shock you, but there's been times that I haven't been faithful to God. There's been times when I, dare I say it, Pat, I've had sin in my life and it's not a, a rare enough occurrence, I'll say it like that. But God has always been faithful for, to forgive me when I've repented of that sin and when I've turned back to him. And I'm so thankful for that. I want to preach a message this morning entitled, More Than Enough. And I'm going to start out by reading one verse that uh, I'm not saying it doesn't have anything to do with the scripture because I think, it, or the message it does. But I've got a lot of scriptures here and, and I'm going to apologize in advance for running you through the Bible. We're going... Old Testament to New Testament today and just want to give you some encouragement this morning. Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6. Somebody said something to me um, this week that inspired this message, I think, and made me begin to, to think about what God has done for us. <clears throat> Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. It says this, Let your con conduct be without covetousness, be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear. What can man do to me? Isn't that a wonderful statement from the word of God? The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do? It doesn't pass through, pass through the hands of God first. <clears throat> Why would I want what someone else has when I have more than enough now? Why do I need more and why do we need more? Because we already have more than enough in Christ. And so I'll preach the whole message in just a couple of minutes here. And I'm going to tell you why we have enough. Amen? We serve a God that is more than enough. I want to remind you by showing you some... Uh, Scripture, some stories in Scripture that I hope will inspire you to bring to your remembrance the things that God has done and how He's been more than enough and how He continues to be and will continue to be more than enough for us. First one is in 1 Kings chapter 17. And it's the story of the widow of Zarephath. Zarephath, I can't even say the name right. And it's about the prophet Elijah. God had been working with King Ahab. He turned out to be an evil king. He married Jezebel and Jezebel brought idol worship into the nation of Israel and Ahab consented to that and God was trying to get Ahab's attention so he sent Elijah who pronounced a drought for three and a half years on Israel and the drought caused all the brooks to dry up. There was no water. There was no produce. People were starving. It was a bad situation. All to get Ahab's attention. And as God always takes care of his people. He was taking care of Elijah by planting him next to a brook that miraculously had water in it when everything else was dried up. And he calls the ravens, a bunch of birds, to come and bring food to Elijah every day. And he drank water from the brook. Pretty soon the brook dried up as part of the drought, right? No, that's not true. It was God's, uh, it was God's direction that he was giving to Elijah. Elijah, you don't have water anymore. You're going to have to go get it somewhere else. I want you to go to Zarephath and see this widow. And she's going to sustain you. She's going to give you something to eat. And that's the story. And I want to show you that God is more than enough. He came into this, the city there, and he found the woman gathering some sticks. And he said, basically, what are you doing? And she said, uh, I'm gathering these few sticks. I'm going to make a little bitty fire. And I'm going to make the last little bit of meal and the last little bit of oil. I'll mix that together and make uh, some bread. And I'm going to feed myself and my son. And we're just going to die because that's all the food we've got. So they were ready to die. The drought had affected them in a tremendous way. And I want you to see what Elijah said. It's 1 Kings 17, um, verse 13. 
And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Sounds like that verse I just read. Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. Go and prepare your last meal. But first, make me a small cake from what you have. Bring it to me and afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did uh, according to the word of Elijah, and she and her household ate for many days. Verse 16. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. God provided more than enough for one day. He provided until the drought was over. God is more than enough. In 2 Kings chapter 4, now we're talking about the prophet Elisha and another story about a different widow. This widow had a different problem. The first widow had a problem of <coughs> excuse me, being in a drought <coughs> and not having food. And she needed sustenance. She needed to be sustained. The second widow was in debt. The widow had two sons. Her husband had passed away. She had no way to pay her debts. So they were getting ready to come and take her two sons into slavery to pay off the debt. And so here comes Elisha. He said, Elisha said to the woman, what do you have in your house? She said, all I have is just a little jar of oil. That's all I've got. Glad that God reintroduced me to this story. I've forgotten about it. Elisha told the woman and the two sons, go and borrow all the vessels you can find. Go into your house and shut your door and start pouring out that oil into the empty vessels. Verse 6 says, this is 2 Kings 4, 6. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full. Now listen, she had a jar of oil and she was gathering all the empty vessels she could find from all of her neighbors. She borrowed them and she poured oil out of the little jar into the big vessels. And I can imagine big tall vessels and a little bitty jar of oil. And as she poured it out, it didn't get empty. It just kept filling itself up somehow. I don't know how that works. I guess it might be a miracle. I don't know. And I love this. <laughs> it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son... Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. You filled them all up. There's no other vessel to pour oil into. And so the oil ceased. Verse 7 says, She came and told the man of God. She told Elijah. And he said to her, Go and sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. God provided more than enough just to pay that debt. He provided a living for that widow and her son, her two sons. Let's move to the New Testament, Matthew 14. A familiar story, the feeding of the 5,000. <coughs> Jesus saw the crowd around him, more than 5,000 people. It's 5,000 men, plus women and children, I think the Bible says. Jesus saw the need of the crowd. He was filled with compassion on them because they hadn't had anything to eat. And he called his disciples together and said to them, why don't you guys give them something to eat? The disciples wanted to send them away. Yet Jesus said, no, i got a better idea. Why don't you give them something to eat? He called for them to do the impossible. They said all they had was a basket. They had, what, five loaves and two fish? Is it that one? I think it is. Five loaves and two fish. And it said that Jesus took the, the loaves and he, he took the food and he blessed it. And he passed it out to his disciples. He said, here, go give it to everybody. And listen, it says in verse 20, Matthew 14, 20. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments that remained. Now, I'm a math, I'm a numbers kind of guy. That doesn't work out for me. How do you have one basket that maybe was full? I don't know if it's full or not. And then you wind up with 12 baskets after over 5,000 people ate lunch, ate dinner. 
I'm not sure how that works. That must be something that only God can do. Maybe that's it. But God provided more than enough to fill all the people. And he went above and beyond that. He provided enough to fill 12 baskets with fragments. 12, 11 baskets more than he had to start with. I'm telling you that God is the God that is more than enough. He's the God of famine and drought in the first story. And he's the God of finances and freedom in the second story. He's the God of filling and overflowing in the third story. And now I want to take you to John chapter 4. John chapter 4, the story of the woman at the well. Good story. Also one of my favorites. As Jesus had sent his disciples in, they were going to go to, the go to town and buy food and Jesus was thirsty and he came to a well and there was a woman there and that was coincidental, by the way. It wasn't ordained of God. Sure, he didn't have a plan. He was just walking along and it happened, right? No, God planned this so that I could read this story to you today so we could talk about the story today. Jesus got to the well and he began to speak to the woman. Now, Jewish custom was that men did not speak to women in public. He broke this barrier of gender. We have a gender war going on in this world. I don't, it's, it's, a, it's a war that I don't know what winning looks like. I, I we used to have only two genders, and now we have multiple genders, apparently. And, and I'm maybe not hip enough to understand. Maybe that's it. Or maybe I just believe the Bible when it said God created male and female only, and there's not any in between. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But Jesus broke this barrier that made women second-class citizens. Jesus did that over 2,000 years ago. Why are we fighting about it now? In God's eyes, there's not any male or female or Jew or Greek. It's, it's all the same. And so he broke that barrier of gender. And he broke the barrier of race. We have a problem in this country, especially with racism. And I want to tell you, I don't believe we have a problem per se with racism. We have a problem with racists. And I, this is going to be recorded, right? Should I just go on and say it? I believe the racists are the ones, a lot of times, that are playing the race card all the time. They want there to be racism so they can have something to fight about. Now listen, I want to tell you, if there is race, racism involved in your life, if somebody is, it, uh, doesn't treat you right because of your race, that's absolutely wrong, and God does not uh, condone that. But listen, we don't need to play around with things like that that divide people. We're dividing our nation on purpose in many cases. Our politicians are dividing this country because they want it to be divided. And they're using race to do that, and I think that's so wrong, and they'll have to pay for that. They'll have to pay the price for that. Racism is wrong. Jesus broke the barrier of race. He destroyed racism over 2,000 years ago, but we're still fighting about it. And I want to tell you, we're still fighting about it because we're not following Jesus. Amen? Amen. If we were following Jesus, if we felt the way Jesus did, we just love people regardless of their nationality or their color or anything else. Because that's how Jesus loves. But we don't want to do that. We want to play around with, with people. and It's so wrong. So he broke this barrier of gender. He broke the barrier of race. And he offered this woman more than enough. She was going there to get physical water. She had to go there in the middle of the day because she was a woman of ill repute. And by the way, he also broke that barrier. Because we don't want to be around sinner people, do we? Oh, no, we're too clean for that. That's not what Christianity is about. Christianity is about Following in the footsteps of a Savior who went to the people that needed him the most. Who went out to the people that were unclean. And he healed them and he touched them and he brought them into the family of God. That's what the church is called to do. Jesus broke through that barrier of sin. He offered her more than enough. She was looking for water for a day. She didn't know she was going to meet the Savior that day. But he had set the appointment with her. Just the two of them there together. He said to her in verse 13, he said in a previous verse, if you had known who I was, you would have asked me for some living water. And this is what he said. He described what the living water was. Look at verse 13. 
Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. He's talking about the physical water. Whoever drinks well water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, <coughs> give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here again to draw. The woman asked for water, and the God that is more than enough, the Savior that is more than enough, gave her more than water. He gave her the well. Amen? Yes. Because that's the kind of God we serve. Amen. Jesus knew of her sin, and he was leading her to a place where she could receive forgiveness. He accepted her. He confronted her sin. She told the truth about her sin. Kind of. It's like we do in the Brother Harper. We kind of confess our sins sometimes. Jesus knew what was going on in her life, and he still went to her and spoke to her and loved her and gave her more than enough. Jesus offered her. She went to the well for a drink. He offered her a new direction in her life. You think about what happened in this story, and it's an amazing story. First time he had revealed himself as Messiah to anyone, any human being on this earth, and it was... A Samaritan woman of ill repute. Isn't that crazy? I think that gives us an idea of who Jesus was coming here for. For those that needed him the most. She sought to be filled with water, but Jesus was promising her something that would fill her life forever. He was promising her in the future, in the very near future, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not with water, but with the Holy Spirit. He said in verse 23, they started talking about religion. He said in verse 23, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said in verse 25, I know that Messiah is coming, and when he comes, he'll tell us all things. And in Jesus, in verse 26, he said, I who speak to you am he. Let me just put it in our language. When she said, I know that Messiah is coming, he's going to teach us all things when he gets here, she, he, he said to her, look at me, I'm here. It's me, the Messiah. Jesus revealed himself to this woman. He gave her more than she ever imagined that she would, that she would receive. Think about this woman's life. And I thought it was kind of ironic. She spent many years looking for a man. Then she had five or six husbands, and the man she was living with wasn't her own husband. <coughs> By the way, Jesus condemns this living together thing, just so you know. It's not right. 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 She spent her life looking for a man to fill her need. <laughs> Jesus, the man that she really needed, found her and met her greatest need. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> I'm going to close with this. You know, Jesus knocked down barriers of gender and race and sin. And what he really offered this woman was not something temporary, but he offered a new covenant. He was explaining what it was going to be like once he had died on the cross and given his life to pay the penalty for sin. And once he ascended and sent back the Holy Spirit, he's describing it. He's given her a future look at what was going to happen in her life and how she was going to be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit of God. And that was going to be more than enough. Jesus broke these barriers down, gave her a new covenant, gave her a new life, and he's done the same for us. He has sought us and given us more than enough. Listen, he came to earth because people are in a spiritual drought. Remember the first story? People are, in this day, in a spiritual drought. Headed towards certain death, just like the woman and her son. And we need somebody who will be able to sustain us. If we don't get that sustenance from God, if we don't get that sustenance from Christ, we're going to die. And we're going to be lost eternally. There's people today that are living under the slavery of sin, just like the two sons were about to be slaves in the second story. And they're living under this slavery to sin, and they don't have any way to pay the debt 
to get out of it. And you know what they need? They need someone that will pay the debt for them and set them free. And we have that in Jesus because he's more than enough. People are empty inside and they're searching for someone to fill the void in their life. They're searching for somebody that's different because everybody else has let them down. They need somebody who will keep his promises. Somebody who will never leave or forsake them. That's Jesus because he's more than enough. We need someone who's more than enough to meet all of our needs, to provide more than enough so we have an overflow of the love of God, of the power of God in our life, that we can share that overflow with others. Can you imagine the woman with all the oil? I don't know, she might have put out a sign that said, oil for sale, and just left it up the rest of her life. She had plenty. God had provided more than enough. It was sustenance for her family. Don't you know we need to hang a sign on the outside of our house and and the bumper sticker on our car. Nobody uses bumper stickers much anymore. We need to be talking about Jesus in every way we can. I think there's something called social media that if you're involved in that, you need to be telling people about Christ. Because he's more than enough. People look for a lot of things. And, and it's like the old song says, you know, looking for love in all the wrong places. That's, a, that's an old country song, you know. We're looking in all the wrong places for someone to fill the emptiness in our life. It's not going to happen through all the things we try to fill our life with. Because none of that is, is eternal. It's all temporary. Jesus is more than enough. Let me read Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 again. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. I'm going to tell you, we need to be content in Christ. He said he'd never leave us or forsake us. And so if we have Christ and he's more than enough, we can say, the Lord is my helper. I'll not fear what is man going to do to me. We don't have to be afraid. The church, I want you to say this morning, the Lord is my helper. He's never going to leave me or forsake me. I'm not going to be afraid. There's nothing anybody can do to me that God does not approve of, that God hasn't got in his plan for me. I trust God. You know what? I've, I've determined in my life, I've decided in my life that God's plan is better than mine. I used to think I had a pretty good plan. Anybody that's made any plans, you know one thing has happened to plans. They change. God's plan does not change. It's eternal. It's forever. And I want to invite you. If you've got a need, I want to tell you there's a God that has more than enough for you to meet that need. Maybe you've got a problem in your life with Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's you don't have enough money to buy food. Maybe it's a problem with your children. Maybe it's a problem in a relationship that you have. Maybe you just don't know where you're headed in life and you need somebody to give you direction. I want to tell you that Jesus is more than enough. He's more than enough for us today. So I want us to stand. <coughs> tells a similar story. Y'all are going to freak out about this because some of you that aren't old enough won't know. We used to play outside with sticks and rocks and junk because they didn't have computers. I know that sounds really ancient. We didn't have phones. We didn't have we had TVs but they only had three channels. It was black and white and it wasn't that great actually. So we'd go outside. We'd ride our bike if we had one or if it didn't have a flat tire. Mine was always flat fast. <laughs> we, I wrote it anyway, it didn't matter. We'd do anything we could outside because we love being outside and we love playing. And when it got time to be supper, there'd be a maybe a head stick out the front door, the side door, even the back door where we were, and they'd say, Boys, come in, it's time to eat. And you know what would happen? If we didn't come the first time, we'd get another call. If we didn't come the third time, we got a personal visit from the one making the call. I want to tell you something about God. He's calling us today to come and have our needs met, to come to the table. And if we'll pay attention to him and we'll come when he calls us, we'll receive more than enough. We'll receive more than we need. Much more than what we deserve. But 
more than we need. That's the kind of God that we serve. He's not going to come out and get you. But I want to tell you, he's seeking you right now. He's calling you right now. If you're listening online and you don't know Christ, this message is for you. He's calling to you. And he's saying you need to leave behind that life that you have, the life that's left you feeling empty and alone. And you need to come and find the one that's more than enough. His name is Jesus. And he's the son of God who came and died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sin. And you don't have to drag your past around with you anymore. You can raise your hand and say, God, I've sinned against you and I confess it before you. I repent of it. And I want to leave it behind and he'll forgive you like that. And he'll come into your life and he'll fill you up. You'll have an experience with God that you, you can't even put into words. God will come in and live in you and give you eternal life. That's what he's promised. And I want to tell you, I'm banking on that. I believe in that. I don't trust too many people. I trust the Lord. I believe His words. He'll always keep His promises. I want to invite you to come. We're going to pray. And we're going to have a time of invitation. Let's bow our heads together. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we praise you, God, for all the blessings you've given us. And Lord, as we reflect on these stories in the Bible, we realize that in the Old Testament, you were the God that was more than enough. In the New Testament... You're the God that's more than enough in this new covenant you've given us. You've given us more than enough. Lord, you're the one that hears our prayers. You're the one that acts upon those prayers and gives us the answer that we really need. And you always give us more than enough. And God, we just want to praise you right now for that. And Father, as we come to this time of invitation, we want to say... Lord, we confess our sin to you. You know what's in our lives. You know the direction we're going. And God, we just want to know, want you to know we agree with you, Lord. You're right. Your way's better. Lord, we submit to your, to your will in our lives, God. I pray that you would lead us, Lord. You would forgive us. Lord, whatever need we have, we know that you're more than enough, so we cry out to you with the expectation, God, that you're going to answer in a miraculous way. God, we praise you for that. We ask that you set us free today. Make us into the people you want us to be, God, because we know you're more than enough. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you need to come and pray, you come and pray.
Give him a clap of praise. Thank you, God. Amen. We're so glad you guys are here today and you've, uh, you've been uh, listening and you've made it easy to preach and I enjoy um, preaching when it's easy. Um, I hope you've been encouraged by this message because I, you know, it just, it's been on my mind all week that we have so much more than we need. And not just material things, I'm talking about the spiritual things that we have in Christ. It's much more than we can even imagine, and we probably haven't even scratched the surface of what God can do if we'll devote ourselves to Him. And, and so I just want to encourage you with this message that God is more than enough. Is there a word of testimony right now? Something that'll lift up Christ. His mercy is new every morning. Yes, yes. it is. We need that mercy. Freedom right there, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Freedom and healing. Amen. Who else? Anybody else, real quick? Our son in law had his son on the run and the test results come back not the answer. Uh, amen. amen. Anybody else? We're going to close in prayer in just a second. All right. Listen, I appreciate you guys being here. Appreciate your attention uh, during the message. And I pray that the Holy Spirit has encouraged you today uh, from these scriptures. Just amazing stories. God, you know, you read and you don't think about these stories you've known all your life. And then suddenly they pop up and it's almost like they're brand new to you. And I'm thankful that God uh, gives us those things and gives us a glimpse into what he's trying to tell us. It only it takes me, I've been a Christian a long time, and uh, 50 plus years, and uh, I've been reading the Bible kind of off and on at least for a long time, and some of these stories I'm just now getting, so I'm a little slow on the uptake, but um, 
God always teaches us and he's always showing us new things and I'm so thankful for that. I, I love hearing from God and, and uh, sharing that with you guys. So thank you for being here to, to listen. All right, we're going to bow our heads in prayer. My brother Pat will lead us in prayer. Father, thank you again this morning for the opportunity to be here. Lord, thanks for help. Thanks for uh, watching for our church, Lord. And Father, giving us uh, ideas of ways to be able to meet safely, Father, and keep the congregation straight. Lord, just thank you for uh, all that you're doing inside our congregation, Lord, the programs that are going on, the things that we've been able to just carry on in your name, uh, despite the things that are going on around us in the world. Lord, we say that uh, we're thankful today for having more than enough. Father, we, when we think about what we don't have, Lord, that's when we take our eyes off of you, and uh, we, we certainly have enough to be able to praise you for, and Father, we just thank you for being worthy of that praise. We ask you to go with us now and be with us this week. Keep us safe. Amen. Amen.